Good evening and welcome to this meeting of Troy City Council. It's Monday, March 21st at 7 p.m. I'm William Lutz, President of Council. We'll begin tonight with the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance given by Mr. Schilling. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. When I was growing up in Barberton, Ohio in the 1950s, we had neighbors who had recently arrived from Czechoslovakia. Having fled their country, as the communists tightened their control of the population through political repression, persecution, imprisonment, and execution. At the time, I didn't fully understand why they were our neighbors, but they were friendly and were accepted by everybody. Today, we see Russian tanks in the streets of a country that at one time had been under the control of the Russian government. Ukraine threw off the yoke of communist oppression 30 years ago, but today, Ukrainians are fighting for their lives their freedom, and their independence. We are witnessing indiscriminate Russian bombardment of residential neighborhoods, hospitals, and schools with little regard for the civilian population, creating the largest humanitarian crisis since World War II. We have seen over three million Ukrainian, Ukrainian citizens, mostly women and children, flee their country to escape the terror of a war that they, they do not expect or want. We have seen neighboring countries like Poland do all they can they can to aid these refugees. President Biden has said that America will welcome these refugees with open arms. On our southern border, we also have a humanitarian crisis. Thousands of refugees wait at our southern border, hoping beyond hope that they will be granted asylum in the United States. These refugees have fled dictatorships, corruption, repression, violence, and gang warfare. They have given up hope of living a life in peace realizing that if they stay in their home country, they will be destined to live a life in unimaginable poverty, no matter how hard they work. Like our forefathers, they see America as the land of opportunity. But due to poor past political leadership, America has not welcomed these refugees with open arms. Instead, these refugees have been branded as illegals, undocumented, diseased, rapists, drug dealers, criminals, and very, very bad people who are somehow not worthy of our help. Our airways are filled with want-to-be political office seekers offering solutions to this humanitarian crisis. They claim that by finishing the wall, hiring more border police, or somehow doing a better job of interdicting the drug traffic, they will, they will solve this crisis. They ignore the possibility that just like our forefathers, these refugees are willing to work and have a desire to better themselves if given the opportunity. These refugees will not take our jobs, but take the vacant jobs offered if they are allowed admittance. <clears throat> I'm sorry, if they are allowed admittance, they will uh, pay taxes, pay into Social Security, and contribute to our economic growth. They will work to make a better life for themselves and their families. with their, their, with their Band-Aid uh, soundbite solutions, wannabe political office seekers appear incapable of understanding the true causes of this crisis. Their solutions offer no possible hope of actually helping the refugees bring an end to this crisis or bettering our country. Oops. Let us hope and pray that the war in, in Ukraine is the last war in Europe. Let us hope and pray that the Ukrainian people will soon be able to return to what is left of their homes and are given the opportunity, the help, and the resources they need to rebuild their country as free, independent people. Let us pray that we elect leaders who will provide real solutions to the humanitarian crisis south of our border. Let us pray that we can open our hearts and open our country to all who seek a better life in America. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Shelley. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Pierce? Present. Mrs. Snee? Here. Mr. Schilling? Present. 
Mr. Roselle? Here. Mr. Sievert? Present. Mr. Whitten? Here. Mr. Twiss? Here. Mrs. Marshall? Here. Mr. Phillips? Here. All members are present. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, can you please read a summary of the minutes of the March 7, 2022 meeting of Troy City Council? Minutes of Council, March 7, 2022. Public hearings were held on agricultural district applications uh, for the uh, EMAT, EMARI, EMARC, Ohio Limited Family Partnership, and also for the Neal Brothers, Inc. Committee reports, Community and Economic Development Committee recommended that uh, the moratorium on surface street parking lots not be reissued. Committee recommended that legislation be prepared to approve a replat and vacation of utility easements in the Heritage Village at Troy Country Club subdivision. Community Partnerships Committee recommended that legislation be prepared accepting transfer of a 0 0.170 acre parcel of Lincoln Center into the name of the city of Troy. Committee also recommended that legislation be repaired, prepared to approve the one Ohio MOU related to the op opioid settlement and also to designate <laughs> Chief Simmons as the representative to the Region 15 Board. Finance Committee recommended that legislation be prepared amending the allocation of revenues for fines for parking violations. Personnel Committee recommended that legislation be prepared to establish position of assistant golf professional. Streets and Sidewalks Committee recommended that legislation be prepared for the ODOT consent legislation to pave part of State Route 55. Committee recommended that the Equalization Board recommendation be accepted regarding the South Stanfield Reconstruction Project Phase 1. And committee recommended that legislation be prepared increasing the authorization for the Main, West Main Street Utility Duck Bank Project to $1 million. Resolution number R20-2022, participation in Region 15 governance structure having to do with the opioid settlement, first reading and adopted. Ordinance number R21, 2022, appointing the fire chief as the regional representative to the One Ohio Recovery Foundation Board, first reading and adopted. Resolution R22, 2022, the ODOT consent legislation was given first reading. Resolution number R23, 2022, accepting the report of the Assessment Equalization Board regarding the South Stanfield project was given first reading and was adopted. Resolution number R24, 2022, increasing authorization for the West Main Street Duck Bank project, first reading and adopted. Resolution number R25, 2022, approving application of EMAT, EMARI, EMARC, and Ohio Limited Family Partnership for renewal of far farmland and agricultural district was given first reading. Resolution number R26, 2022. Application of Neal Brothers for renewal of application in Agricultural District was given first reading. Ordinance number 06, 2022. Accepting of, acceptance of parcel of Lincoln Community Center, first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 07, 2022. Vacating easements in Heritage Village at Troy Country Club subdivision, first reading and adopted. Ordinance number 08, 2022. Regarding the allocation of fines for all parking violations is, was given first reading. Ordinance number 09, 2022, fixing salaries of employees, uh, particularly the assistant golf professional position, was given first reading and was adopted. Following comments, council adjourned 7.32 p.m. Thank you, Mrs. Nighthouse. Council wishes to dispose of the minutes this evening. Second. 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 Move to approve the minutes by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Roselle. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Minutes are approved. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. We have five committee reports this evening. We'll begin with the first two reports from the Community and Economic Development Committee and Mr. Schilling. Okay, thank you. Uh, this committee met on March 14th to consider the renewal of farmland in an agricultural district application of EMAP, EMARI, EMARC, and Ohio Limited Family Partnership filed by Mark Schaefer to continue to have 83.18 acres of ground located at 2373 North Washington Road remain in an agricultural district. This is the fourth such application for this parcel of land. The application must be refiled every five years. 
The required public hearing was held March 7th with no comments made. It is a recommendation of this committee that council approve resolution number R25-2022, the application of EMAT, EMARY, EMARC, and Ohio Limited Family Partnership for parcel number D08-104384 to remain an agricultural district. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Samuel Pierce, Mrs. Lynn Snee, and myself, Jeff Schilling, as chairman. Any comments or questions on this report? Seeing none, Mr. Schilling, please go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Again, this committee met on March 14th to consider the renewal of farmland in an agricultural district application of Neal Brothers Incorporated by Philip E. Neal to continue to have two parcels on Experiment Farm Road for a total of 105 acres remain in an agricultural district. This is the third such application for these parcels of land the application must be refiled every five years. The required public hearing was held March 7th with no comments made. It is a recommendation of this committee that council approve resolution number R26, 2022, the application of Neal Brothers Incorporated for parcel numbers D08-105802 and parcel D08-105804 to remain in an agricultural district. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Pierce, Mrs. Snee, and myself, Jeff Schilling, as chairman. Thank you, Mr. Schilling. Any comments or questions on this report? Just, just for clarification, they can apply every five years forever, right? I believe that's correct. Okay. Kind of Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Recreation and Parks Committee and Mr. Wooden. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this committee met on March 14th to consider use agreements for the June 24th and August 6th mm -hmm. concerts at Treasure Island Park, as those concerts will include the sale and consumption of alcoholic beverages. Events that include the sale and consumption of alcohol at this venue require specific council action. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to execute the Treasure Island Park non-ticketed use agreement for the June 24th and August 6th, 2022 concerts but as respectfully submitted by Mr. Rizal, Mr. Schilling, and myself as chair. Thank you, Mr. Wooden. Any comments or questions on this report? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Streets and Sidewalks Committee and Mr. Phillips. Thank you, sir. On March 14, this committee met regarding bidding authorization for the South Stanfield Road Reconstruction Phase 1 project. The most, <clears throat> excuse me, the most recent estimate has taken into account cost increases being experienced. Information is in the detailed report regarding the project funding, which should require a future reappropriation. It is the recommendation of this committee that legislation be prepared authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the South Stanfield Road Reconstruction Phase 1 project at a cost not to exceed $1,970,000. This is respectfully submitted by Mr. Pierce, Mrs. Snee, and myself as chair. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Are there any comments or questions on this report? Seeing none, we will end with an oral report from the Personnel Committee and Mr. Pierce. Uh, Mayor Oda has requested approval of the reappointment of Theodore Ristoff to the Miami County Board of Health. It is at the strong recommendation of the Miami County Board of Health. This committee supports the request. I move the council approves the reappointment of Theodore Ristoff to the Miami County Board of Health for a new term commencing April 1st, 2022 through March 31st, 2027. I will second that. It has been moved for the reappointment by Mr. Pierce, seconded by Mr. Phillips. Any final comments or questions? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Sneak? Yes. Motion is approved. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. We'll move on to citizens' comments for items on the agenda. We have two resolutions and four ordinances on the agenda tonight. If anybody in the audience wishes to address council on those items, you're invited to come to the podium, give your name and address. You have two minutes to address council. Seeing none, move on to resolutions. Mrs. Knight, you please read the first resolution of the evening, resolution R25, 2022. Resolution number R25, 2022. 
Resolution approving application of EMAT, EMARI, EMARC, and Ohio Limited Family Partnership for renewal of farmland in an agricultural district. This uh, resolution had a public hearing at the prior meeting and has been recommended by the committee. Second reading. Does the wish to dispose the item? Move to suspend. Second. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Schilling. Seconded by Mrs. Snee. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Second. The three reading rule has been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the resolution by Mr. Phillips and seconded by is it Mr. Twist. <laughs> Any final comments or questions? Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the next resolution for the evening? Resolution R26-2022. Resolution number R26-2022. Resolution approving application of Neal Brothers, Inc. for renewal of farmland in an agricultural district. This uh, resolution also had a public hearing at the previous meeting, and the committee has recommended it be the legislation be approved. This is the second reading. Move to suspend. Second. second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Roselle, seconded by Mr. Twist. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. The three reading rule has been suspended. Moved to adopt. Second. <laughs> been moved to adopt the order. A resolution by Mr. Sievert, seconded by Mr. Whitten. I got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Are there any final comments or questions? <laughs> Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. The resolution is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the first ordinance of the evening, Ordinance 08-2022. Ordinance amending Ordinance Number 0-1390 regarding the allocation of fines for all parking violations and declaring an emergency. This will place 75% of the fines into the parking meter fund, retain 25% in the parking and downtown improvement fund. This is the second reading. Move to suspend. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Sievert, seconded by Mrs. Snee. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Move to adopt. Second. Second. The three reading rule has been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the ordinance by Mr. Siebert, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Any final comments or questions? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Siebert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the next ordinance of the evening, Ordinance 010 2022. Ordinance number 010 2022. Ordinance authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio to execute a Treasure Island non ticketed use agreement for 2022 events at Treasure Island Park. These will be for the events on June 24th and August 6th, at which um, adult beverages are sold. This is the first reading. Move to suspend. Second. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Witten, seconded by Mr. Phillips. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Witten? Yes. Mr. Twist? Yes. 
This is Marshall. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Move to adopt. Second. The three reading rules been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the ordinance by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Wynn. Any final comments or questions? Mrs. Knight, please call the roll. Mrs. Snee. Yes. Mr. Schilling. Yes. Mr. Rosell. Yes. Mr. Sievert. Yes. Mr. Whitten. Yes. Mr. Twiss. No. Mrs. Marshall. Yes. Mr. Phillips. Yes. Mr. Pierce. Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, we please read Ordinance 011-2022. Ordinance no, number 011, 2022, ordinance determining to proceed with the South Stanfield Road reconstruction phase one project and authorizing the Director of Public Service and Safety of the City of Troy, Ohio, to advertise for bids and enter into a contract for the South Stanfield Road reconstruction project phase one at a total cost not to exceed $1,970,000. First reading. Move to suspend. Second. It's been moved to suspend the three reading rule by Mr. Rosell, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Schilling? Yes. Mr. Rosell? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Wooden? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Uh, second. The three reading rules been suspended. It's been moved to adopt the ordinance by Mr. Phillips, seconded by Mr. Schilling. Any final comments or questions? Seeing none, Mrs. Knight, will you please call the roll? Mr. Roselle? Yes. Mr. Sievert? Yes. Mr. Whitten? Yes. Mr. Twiss? Yes. Mrs. Marshall? Yes. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Pierce? Yes. Mrs. Snee? Yes. Mr. Schilling? Yes. Ordinances adopt. Thank you, Mrs. Knight. Mrs. Knight, will you please read the last ordinance of the evening? Ordinance 012, 2022. Ordinance number 012, 2022. An ordinance changing the zoning of in lots 11463 and 11464 in the city of Troy, Ohio, from Miami County zoning of A1, domestic agriculture, and A2, general agriculture, to the city zoning of R4, <coughs> single family residence district. This is the land known as the Strayer Annexation. This has been recommended by, uh, for approval by the Troy Planning Commission. The ordinance will have a public hearing at the next meeting. First reading. In consideration that we'll have a public hearing on this at the next meeting, this will be held over for a second reading. Moving on to communications and announcements. Mrs. Knight, do we have any? Uh, just the reminder about filing of financial disclosure statements. I think we got two more reminders, and then we're done with it for the day. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to, uh, are, are there any other? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Moving on to comments of officials, Mayor Oda. I have nothing this evening, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Director of Public Service and Safety, Mr. Tittering. Uh, just a couple of things, uh, actually three. Uh, first of all, uh, we've had some questions, seen some social media regarding the tavern building and the status and whether or not we can or should um, encourage uh, the removal of the chain link fence and the uh, fixing of the property. There were some motions that were uh, decided last week. Um, those appear to be the last, uh, what do you call them, preliminary motions, I guess. Uh, and uh, they were dispensed of. Uh, the court has set some uh, deadlines for briefs to be filed after, after which uh, uh, she can uh, decide the case. So the end is in sight. Um, we have up to 80 days to, uh, to file those briefs back and forth between Appley and Appley. Um, but nonetheless, uh, the procedural issues are out of, uh, not a pro uh, an issue anymore. And so uh, I guess they're at the meat of the matter. Uh, in the meantime, we did reach out to our legal counsel uh, who advises that we should leave everything status quo uh, as long as the fencing is up there, everything is safe. We don't get into the middle of anything at this point and uh, until the judge uh, rules one way or the other. So, um, next item, uh, unless there are any questions on that. Okay. Uh, we did include a uh, report in the uh, items of interest uh, regarding the DORA. That's early yet. 
but uh, we wanted to get something out there and the plan would be that uh, every couple of months until we get to the, uh, the summer when everything picks up, then we'll probably go monthly, but to continue to receive feedback uh, from the staff, from the services, the operations, as well as uh, the business community, just to continually monitor uh, what's going on with the DORA. Uh, so if you get a chance, please look at that. If you've got any questions about it, let me know. If you would like to see any additional information and we can be and we're able to gather it, uh, let me know that as well. Just reach out to me and uh, uh, we want to get a, a nice format for a, a consistent report like we do with many of the other services uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the city uh, so that you have that at least uh, every other month, if not monthly. Uh, the final uh, item is, uh, while I appreciate uh, the bidding authorization for South Stanfield Road, uh, we are hopeful that we will stay within the, uh, the Council authorization uh, to say it's been a challenging capital season uh, already and we're not even through March uh, is probably an understatement. Um, our major project uh, is currently set, scheduled uh, to have a bid opening on April 6th. That is the West Main Street Phase 1. Um, that would be the, uh, uh, the big dog. Uh, we are going to include an alternate in that bid. Uh, to include the duct bank work in case uh, a contractor wants to also bid on that project and perhaps through maybe some savings and mobilization and some other economies of scale, we can help make that a more competitive uh, bid. Uh, but again, that's April 6th that we plan um, uh, to uh, open that bid uh, unless something comes up where we have to do an addendum but which happens from time to time, uh, but we are targeting April 6th so that we can find out what the, uh, uh, the number is going to be. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Director of Law, Mr. Kerber. I have uh, no comments or reports this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kerber. Do any council members have any comments or questions this evening? Mr. Phillips. Thank you, sir. Uh, congratulations on our three uh, city employees that announced their uh, Retirements. One has already occurred uh, with the police department, Mr. Alex Hillman, and uh, the other two, Bruce Absher with the fire, fire, fire department, and Janet Worth with the auditor's office. And congratulations on their tenure with their city. Um, Mr. Tirrington, on April 6th, what is our tentative shovel on the ground date after we have something positive to? Um. I shouldn't answer this as a yes or no question, but that's the best answer I can give you. Um, when we open bids, um, part of the bid form is uh, for the contractor to tell us how many days, when they would expect to start, and when they would hope to finish. Uh, I can tell you in preliminary conversations with some of the bidders, um, it is quite possible that we are not even going to uh, put a shovel in the ground, if you will, uh, this year just because of the, uh, the amount of work, uh, the uh, lack of labor, uh, and probably more than anything else, the uh, supply chain issues. Uh, but we won't know until April 6th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Any other council members with comments or questions this evening? Any staff members with comments this evening? Moving on to residents, if you wish to address council, now is your time. Come to the podium, give your name and address, and address council on any matter you wish to address us on. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ann McDonough. I live at 700 Governors Road. And if I may, I'd like to give um, a few of these agendas, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, as to what I'm going to be speaking of because of the dates that would be kind of confusing. So if I may. If you can, yeah, just, just hand them to Mrs. Knight, please. And... Thank you. I have about six of them. Um, 
I have purchased the land that is adjacent to my property. And I needed to do that because my shed was like three feet into um, the property that belonged to the city, the city park. It was, um, and my reason for coming at this meeting is not that it's gonna make any difference to me. I wanted to make sure that everything was completed before I came here. Um, I'd like answers to the questions that I could not get prior to purchasing my land. Um, and I'm hoping that if anybody else has any dealings with the city, they may be aware that it's not quite as easy as it should be. I really feel that the city should have accountability, and I did not feel they did. Um, first of all, I bought the property with the shed already on there. It was not disclosed to me that, it, excuse me, that it was already there. Um, when I found out, I wanted to make it legal. So that's why I asked for the property to be purchased. I started the whole procedure September 19, 2019, and it was totally completed here in 2021, um, I believe, December, November, um, November 23rd, 21. Um, I had first, when I came, it was said that the mayor would have to approve, which she did, and that was on June 6, 2020. Then the park board meeting had to approve, and the council approved land sale. That was all July 7 and July 13 of 2020. I had a conversation with Sue Knight a few weeks um, into it, and I kept asking, will I be receiving information that this property is going on sale? Oh, indeed, it'll go to my neighbors, it'll come to me, well, it went in the paper, um, I believe it was like July 14th, and um, I never received any of the paperwork. So I called the city, spoke with Sue. She said she dropped it off at my house. I can't say she didn't, but I never got anything. I already had a plan to go to Myrtle Beach three days, yeah, three working days totally from the time that I found out that the property is going up for sale. And the only reason I found out is because a friend of mine told me. And by this time, it's already been in the paper for several weeks. And um, then I had three days to figure out, first of all, who put that shed up. Uh, it was my person that I bought the house from. It was in 2015. I found out where they put it up, but all of a sudden something pops up, nobody says anything until I want to make it right by purchasing the property. So then um, I called Sue, I got the little packet. My neighbors never did receive a packet. They would have told me if they got theirs and I didn't get mine, they would have told me that, hey, your land is up for sale. Now in three days, I didn't have a whole lot um, that I could do but I did come in and I made an appointment with, with Mr. Titterington for that Monday for starting on a Thursday. And I came in personally. They gave me an appointment for 11 o'clock on Monday. I get a phone call uh, Friday evening from Sue Knight. And it says, oh, well, first of all, I'm sorry. I missed one little part where I asked, how was the cost of this all divided? And I also have copies of that if anybody would like it. But I was told by Mr. Titterington when we finally did talk that it was he and Sue Knight that decided on how to charge for this. Also, when my neighbors bought this property on either side, they were each individually treated. I was treated by putting in with the city of Troy two large uh, parcels of property where you can build a house on. My property, we're speaking of 0 0.03 acres. Um, supposedly, I'm giving a deal by getting that for $266, plus all the count, uh, other costs that add up being $1,700. Um, they said that in order to um, list it in the paper, it would cost an individual like $1,400. My neighbors brought their property 
for, you know, they each have larger pieces, and they bought it for like 1500 to 2500 um, and the one had to pay the extra because of the uh, basketball thing on there. But um, the thing that upsets me, and it may not have made any difference, and I know it won't make any difference now, but why would my property be put in with properties along the other side of town, as well as two city properties worth like um, $25,000, $35,000, where mine is worth $266, yet I am to share the cost of the of the um, advertising, which I believe was $266. Um, I do have that for everybody if they'd like to look at it. And it just seems that I was treated differently than my other neighbors. And they just finished their uh, parcel purchase just shortly before I had moved in or even after I had moved in. When I wanted to talk to Mr. Titterington and he canceled that 11 o'clock appointment, something came up. At the time I made the appointment, three appointments were available on Friday. By Monday, they're too busy. Um, I don't believe that it was, if it were um, a high, uh, an expensive company that was going to do that, I don't think that would have been the reply. I think that's very unprofessional to just send me a note, first of all, knowing uh, Sue Knight knew that I was going to be leaving on Tuesday morning. I had <coughs> airplane tickets. I had, was visiting family. And um, it didn't seem to make any difference. I got a message from Mr. Titterington that said something to the effect that if I would like to reschedule, I could. However, we could speak on the phone. So we spoke on the phone. It was like talking to the wall. Um, at the end, he said, well, either you buy it, pay for it, or it goes back to the city. I just feel that is very unprofessional, very not correct. And I was not aware, I guess I'm not into city that much, I was not aware that it stops with Mr. Titterington. There is no one else except the mayor that he has to reply to. I was not aware of that. I was hoping it was a, um, a position that is voted in, but it's not. So, um, Let's see, that's my, uh, so why was I not treated like the others? <coughs> and I, was, I don't know if they can answer me or not, whether any of the other people that were in on this seven group of seven that were buying, two of which be city property, um, if anybody else bought it, I can't imagine they did. And as far as I know, mine was the only one considered surplus property on the, um, on the park. So it was already surplus. Um, I felt that um, I'll be paying taxes on it. I wanted to make it right, and I feel that I was not treated um, like a citizen should be treated. I feel that we are all part of the city of Troy. Troy is not a geographic area. Troy is every single one of us here, and I think we should all be treated equal. Um, any answers to my questions as to why two people are the ones that decided that what the property should be listed as, why, why was I put in with all those other people, especially the city of Troy? Do, do, do you care to respond, Mr. Tittrington? I certainly will. So I recall the, the issue, although it was several months ago. Um, yes, we were not able to uh, uh, to meet in person, uh, but I did talk quite a while uh, with Mrs. McDonough on the phone before she left. Um, so there was no uh, uh, ignoring, there was no delay. Uh, we did it as, uh, as quickly as we can. I don't remember what my schedule was, but it changes frequently, sometimes beyond my control. Second of all, um, we don't unilaterally at the administrative level make these decisions. These are uh, decisions, yes, technically I can set the, uh, the price of the land. Um, we have always had a practice where we will set it based on the uh, fair market value of uh, comparable sales in the area. 
Uh, the, large part, uh, the large part of the cost of uh, Mrs. McDonough's uh, property was uh, the advertising and the surveying costs. Uh, those we have we always charge back to the uh, uh, the person that is buying the property. Uh, that is not something that I do unilaterally. That is something that uh, we clarify, and the park board has been very consistent in uh, wanting us to uh, to charge those costs. Uh, it is fair to everybody in the community that they not have to subsidize these kind of sales. Um, we had, I don't remember how many of these parcels, you might recall that was all part of a bigger project where we did a survey throughout town. Um, and in fact, um, uh, Ms. McDonough uh, reminds me that uh, uh, her parcel, uh, her bid, her advertisement was part of uh, several properties. And so Mrs. McDonough only paid a portion of those costs and not the complete costs. Had, had we uh, advertised this separately, then she would have borne the cost, the entire cost of advertising as well as surveying, um, and that would have been significantly higher. Um, you know, I, I think we answered all those questions once before. I'm not sure what other information we could have given uh, to uh, Mrs. McDonough. Um, she was not the only one that had the uh, surplus property issue. Um, it's not our responsibility, nor are we going to be able to track at the time of closing between buyers and sellers when there are encroachments. Uh, that's what title searches are, are, are for. Um, sometimes they catch them, uh, most of the times they catch them, but every once in a while they don't. So uh, that, is, uh, that is what happened there. That's not something that, that we would have had anything uh, to do with. Um, she did have the, uh, the ability to not bid, and we would have re just removed the, uh, the shed off of our property, but uh, as you all recall, or I guess most of you will recall from last year, we did have this as an ongoing project and concern, and we clarified between 10 and 20 properties, um, encroachments on uh, several parcels of uh, parkland. So. Well, to me, I just say, though, that you say that you're saying exactly what you had said to me on the phone, and it really does not answer why did I not get information about my property being up for sale? Why didn't my neighbors not get information? I do not get the Troy paper. If it had not been for a friend of mine, I wouldn't even have known that the property is up for sale. And here are the cross breakdowns. If I could please give it to you and everybody could look at it and see wh how it's fair. Um, perhaps you were trying to, in my opinion, save money for the city. I don't know. But really, um, I think that, like I said, we all make up at the city. Um, with all due respect, I don't feel that you're being very fair at all, Mr. Tudorington. I don't think that is what you're saying is just like a broken record. And you, so tell me right now, why didn't everybody else get, nobody else can bid on the property except those that have access from the sidewalk. So that leaves my two neighbors on either side of me. You know, this is a big deal. Oh, it has to be advertised for six weeks. I don't know why, because nobody else can bid for it. Mrs. McDonough, as we've explained to you, that is state law. We are required to do that before we That's can fine. offer a, par a property for sale. That's a state law. We can't do anything about that. Okay. This I property was not your property at the time of sale. This was park board property. They declared it, the, they recommended that it be declared surplus. The council then declared it surplus. It was, that piece was carved out and then it was offered for sale. At that point, it was still park board property. It was still the city of Troy's property, actually. It was the city of Troy's deed, I believe. Um, and there was no obligation to sell that land. No. The, the park board and the council could have said, no, we don't want to sell this property, and then given you the opportunity to either move the shed or have us remove it for you. 
Okay, but Mr. Tritterington, you're, you're dwelling on that. How about the cities or your responsibility to inform the people that should have been informed, mainly me, as well as the two people on either side of me? Nobody to this day has not received anything on that. But I, what is the excuse for that, for nobody else? You're telling me everybody has to be notified, and everybody's supposed to be, I imagine, by law, to be notified as far as the going on sale. They um, should have I, gotten a packet. I don't believe that there is an absolute requirement that uh, property owners get notified, since it is just a sale that's, uh, at least in, uh, in theory, available to anybody in the city, our obligation is to advertise it in a, a newspaper of general circulation, which is what we did with the uh, Troy, Troy paper, the Miami Valley, I guess, at that time. Uh, there, was no noti there was no requirement like we have to do with the rezoning or any kind of uh, zoning matter that we notify each individual property owner. In that case, then we would require a certificate uh, certification card to come back with a signature. I was told, and uh, not only by Mrs. Knight, but by the planning staff, that that was hand delivered uh, to you. I don't know about the adjacent property owners. I don't remember if I asked that question or not. But it did, I, I don't was know told, go to you. You're saying you didn't get it? I can't explain why. I don't know, you know, when Amazon delivers, delivers a package, they leave you a message, it's been de delivered. I didn't know to look for it. I was constantly reassured. I had made numerous phone calls. <coughs> yes, you will be informed. Yes, you will get information. Yes, your neighbors will get information. I was told that. So that's what I'm talking about, responsibility. And I don't, I don't believe that you are taking any kind of... Uh, responsibility whatsoever, nor are you giving me an answer as to why. You know, you're saying, I don't think so. I don't know, I'm not an attorney. I don't know the rules. I'm finding them out as I'm working along with this. And again, I say, I know that I, it makes no difference on my property, but I want the other citizens to know that there is no accountability from your end, in my opinion. And obviously, that's the way it is right now. You didn't do anything wrong. You know, everything you did is according to state law. I don't know. I, I don't know how to look up whether, did you just tell me? Was I just told that it's going to be, that I will be informed, that I will be getting a packet? I needed that packet in order to sign and say, yes, I want this property. I'm willing to pay this amount of money. So it's not like, well, I don't know if you're supposed to get it or not. I think I was supposed to get a packet that gives me an informa information as to what it's going to cost and um, what I'm supposed to do in order to proceed with this procedure. And again, ma'am, you're asking me and the staff, me, uh, to be accountable for something that I was told we fulfilled. You're saying that we didn't, so it's really your word against the staff. I don't know what else to tell you about that. That's, I'm not... If, if we had not delivered it, and I was told that we, would not, that we had not delivered it, I would admit that. There's no reason not to admit it. When it came down to it, you bid, I believe you bid the minimum, you, you paid it, it's been transferred over to you. Plus one dollar, yes. But if I send you a check for something and you don't get it, are you going to say, well, we don't believe you sent it, or it didn't come to me? If I send you a check and you don't get it just because it never got there, because you didn't even know it's going to come to you, money that I owe to the city, I'd, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on and say, I sent it to you, you didn't get it, what can I do? This was delivered to me personally. I have to believe that she delivered it. I'm not calling her that she didn't, but I don't know what happened to it then. And as I said, even Amazon calls you and tell, or gives you a notice, something was delivered at your doorstep look for it. So, thank you for listening. I, I do have a question for you, Mr. McDonough. I'm just trying to get the, the math clear. The parcel was worth $266. Correct. And you, you paid an additional $1,700 in fees, so you paid $1,966? No, $1,701, no. the total. total. I went one dollar over, okay. seventeen hundred and one dollars, right. okay. of which I had to pay down a certain amount, uh, three hundred and something dollars, 
in order to say, yes, I want this property, and then at the final, then I paid the remainder. Okay. Thank you. Um, do any other council members have any comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Rose? I just have a question, cl clarification. When we do these groupings of different properties, I know we split the advertising fee and administrative costs. Mm -hmm. Is it, if we have eight properties, do we divide it by eight or do we prorate it? No, we, divide, value we the, divide it by the number of properties that are involved because the ad space is the same. Okay. There's no difference in surveying costs um, just because one parcel is smaller than another. If it is a particularly complex survey where we've got old data and we've got to actually recreate the pins, uh, that's a, that's an extreme circumstance. That was not what happened here. I, well, I mean, I mean, I'm just in general, not necessarily yeah. specific to this, but sure. in general, how we do it. But we just to clarify. Normally, if it was one property, that price would be higher. Versus with eight, the engineering group will give us a discount. Even it's the same cost to survey it, no matter the, the size. Yeah, the, the, uh, there they give us a discount spread, based on the number, not. Right. There if were it was several, an individual, she would have had to pay more. There were several seven parcels that were in this group, and so each two of which each are parcel the city. paid one seventh of the right. of the total cost. Right. I and I and I did call and try to get just an approximate on my own advertising. And granted, I didn't have all the extra words in there, but anyhow, it came out to fifty some dollars. If you double it because there's twice as many words or whatever. It would still be a hundred. It wouldn't be what is I I don't have it for me. Yeah. We we have to advertise for six weeks. Okay. So it's six times yeah. that amount. No, it was for six weeks. I kind of I asked them over and over. I said, is that for six weeks? But the point then still you still are evading the fact that I did not receive the information I should have. Had I not known about it. You know, I probably I'm one of the few people that really wanted the property because I did not want to move the shed because it would fit, make it really close to my house. But um, I was making, trying to make things right. Had I not opened the can of worms, I could have that piece of property and not, play not pay taxes on it. And uh, nobody would know because that just popped up and for, um, from 15 to 20 uh, to 19, um, nobody knew it was there. Nobody really cared. They cared when I started to buy it. And as I said, my neighbors weren't treated the same way on it. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would go that far because there were a couple of other parcels where we found encroachments, uh, one of which was uh, fairly, I was not gonna use that word, but fairly major. Uh, and so uh, this, we knew, we, we found out about this, this shed along with some fences, along with a basketball court, along with several other types of uh, encroachments. And so this was a citywide effort to clean up the boundaries of the property. So in other words, the city has no responsibility. Um, I do hope that people are watching and I do hope that they take away why I was here. Like I said, yeah, I, and I wanted to make sure everything was finished before I came here. And I can see exactly why things are the way they are. Ms. Thank Mc you, everyone. Ms. McDonough, yeah. I'm going to say I'm very sorry that you did not receive the information, but I, as I told you and you invited me into your lovely home, I had brought it to you, so I'm very sorry. I can't tell you what I happened. I understand, but the, you know, it still remains that uh, Mr. Turrington is the only one that's right in this whole situation, obviously. Ma'am, I, I have a question for you. So, Mr. Schilling asked, after the basketball court came to light, Mr. Schilling asked for a survey to be done of park of encroachments on park property. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, it was discovered that a shed was on your pro was on park property that was owned by you. Mm -hmm. You understand the city could have said, "We just want you to move the shed." Instead, council took the the more altruistic approach of saying, "Well, let's let the people buy it." And you pay, you bought your land for two sixty six so that you could continue to keep the shed. Well, but she had to pay the survey. You always had to pay a survey cost. You always had to pay the, the, uh, the, the fee, to, the fee to, put the, uh, to put it in the paper, just like any time you serve publication. So I guess 
And, and it looks like you got a, I, I think you, you have an error, it's actually a quick claim deed, but it looks like you got a quick claim deed then November 23rd. Yes. So I guess my, here's what my fundamental question is, why are you bringing it up at the end of March? Because I wanted to make sure that everything was completed. I had the final, I had the whole thing replotted. I wanted everything totally finished before I came here. Well, the city paid for the replot, or well, you, I guess you paid through it through the, through the survey. Is that what you mean? You should have gotten a new deed, right? You got a quick claim deed. Yes. From the city to you. Yes. And I, that, I, got, that got recorded at the recorder's office on November 23rd, according to your document. Correct. But then I had added it, as there was two parcels at that point, two pieces of property that belonged to me. I had it resurveyed, that was on my own, that's over on top of everything else. I had it resurveyed and plotted into one piece of property instead of two separate ones, so that there are no problems down the line, you know, even after my passing. But, and, and may I just correct you on the one thing? When the property with the with the basketball who still wasn't completed. I was then already in the process of getting my property. Mm -hmm. It wasn't after uh, okay. Mr. Schilling and, you know, was voting it down as far as selling the property. It was at that time when I had already, when I came here and that property owner was here, I already had submitted my letter to want to, to buy that property. Okay. That was before, you know, it was talked about the basketball court and all that. So, so you were you were before they did the survey. That's correct. Okay, That's thank correct. you for that. Yes, okay. I, I am. I am curious as to what is our process to inform adjoining property owners for surplus property sales. We to those who can bid and not yeah, everybody. So to those can, that have yes. that right. are adjacent, um, yeah. Normally, letters are sent to those people. It just simply tells them that there will be um, like, a, like a copy of the ad or just, just a, is, a simple notice. Okay. Is, there a, is there a bid packet that an individual has to submit oh. or, or anything yes. of that nature? Yes. yes, but we do not send bid packets to. So an individual, after they get notice, would have to contact you and say, I would like to put in a bid. Yes. Can you give me a packet? Yes. Do, are those bid packets? Is that what was delivered? Yes. To the bid packet That's the was part delivered I didn't to Mrs. see until Miss right. Knight came back. You know, after I called, like I said, a few days left before I was leaving, and um, I called the city. She told me she will deliver it this time. She delivered it to me personally. The bid packet. Yes, the okay. bid packet. So then I could go ahead and fill out and okay. walked right back and paid my down payment. And, and the letters are just sent. First class? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Any other comments or questions? Thank Is there you. Anything else you wish to add, Mrs. McDonough? No, that's it. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Um, any other residents wish to address council this evening? Seeing none, this meeting will be adjourned. Our next meeting will be Monday, April 4th at 7 o'clock, right here in City Council Chambers. Have a good week, everybody.